Hello again guys, welcome back to the house of Devlin. Um, I'm Big Al Devlin and I'm filming this video in really out of respect to another YouTuber out there called Celtic God who um, is a paganist like myself, a Celtic paganist. I'm a Nordic paganist, but a paganist nonetheless, we're all brothers and cousins and <laughs> in arms, so to speak. Um, and he's an incredibly wise man. He has a lot of knowledge and a lot of insights into paganism. So if this is something that interests you, then please go check out his channel. He is a featured channel here on House of Devlin, so his channel is easy to find. If you can find my channel, go to my homepage um, and... Um, on the right hand side on my home page you'll find um, a link to his channel um, as an icon it's Mjolnir uh, it says Force Hammer okay um, and um, it will take you to his channel where you can uh, watch his videos and, and hear his words now the reason I'm doing this video is it's really a sort of progress video in more, more respects than anything it's just me being able to follow my progress and in my understanding and wisdom of what I have gone through and what I am continuing to go through and will continue to go through to my dying day if that ever comes so to speak um and that is of course the fact that I'm experiencing something that's called the waking dream this is a video that Celtic God has already filmed he's explained what the waking dream is and he explained it very well so please do watch that video before watching this because you'll get a much more rounded sort of sense of what it is um, but the waking dream is what his clan calls a particular state of mind that occurs um, when one experiences not necessarily even a life or death situation but actually a death situation um, where you essentially die now, a misconception in the modern world is, of course, and I'm coming from a medical background myself, um, so I can attest to this, and it is, I believe that the way the Celts and the, the, the well, the pagans, the Celts and the Lords, so on and so forth, put it, is actually more accurate, and that is, is that the body doesn't die immediately, under modern circumstances, the body is dead, or the person is dead, when there is no heart rate, or there's no, you know, there's no pumping, effective pumping of the heart, and there are no brain waves. That's essentially when death is pronounced. Okay. Um, but in old terms, the body is alive for several days, if not longer. Still, the life within it takes time to leave um, it doesn't just leave in an instant in a single moment it takes time to leave and so those who, people who like myself and like Celtic God have experienced death moments moments where officially in theory you have died for me my heart stopped and then it you know there was a, some electrical activity going on there but it wasn't functioning properly um and i was unconscious my mind was gone i was elsewhere i was i was in darkness and i was you know and i was elsewhere um my heart stopped and out of sheer force of will or perhaps even divine intervention who knows but i believe in my case in just through sheer force of will because what brought me back was hearing the screams of my girlfriend um, who was hurt in the accident that caused me to be in such a state um, hearing her screaming in pain was what I, which brought me back that was the sound that brought me back to the world and at that point my heart restarted it went back to complete normality I had an ECG monitor attached to me at the time and it went back to complete normality without outside influence, without, you know, CPR, without um, defibrillation. And Celtic God went through, you know, a similar experience, uh, uh, de uh, his own personal death experience, but he went through a an experience like it where he was essentially dead for a much longer period. Well, I was, I was unconscious and I don't know how long my heart was, going like that for, for 30 minutes and he was out for I think roughly the same sort of time so for 30 minutes roughly both me and him were not of this world in that sense 
and that's a scary thing when you think about it. Um, how can one return from that? Well, the answer is is because, you know, without having Celtic God as a guide, I would never have understood this. I would never have known about waking death. Um, no doctor wanted to touch me because after about roughly three days after the, my accident, I started developing this belief system where I believed I was dead. I believed that I no longer lived, that this was, you know, uh, around me, an illusion. It was maybe the spirit realm, uh, purgatory, I don't know, but I knew it wasn't real. But to me, it was not real. Um, and I believed that even members of my family were not real. They were just either spiritual beings or divine beings or they were figments of my imagination and uh, I didn't know what was going on. I was questioning reality. Nothing felt real. I felt numb to the world, yet I felt bigger than ever regards my emotions and my thoughts despite a numbness in it also it's very hard to describe without having going through it yourself and i hope that i never <laughs> wish it upon anyone because getting to that point typically requires some horrific obviously the pain and the suffering that i went through during the accident that that you know put me into the situation that I, I am now in was horrific and i will never forget the pain that i went through i, I will also not forget the fact that i fought through all that pain to remain here on this earth. I came back to this world to protect my family. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to protect my family and that is what allowed me to return to this world, I think, through sheer force of willpower. But the consequences of the reasons of why I came back or whatever, it doesn't matter. The consequences were simply that I no longer believed I lived to me it was more logical that I died that day and that this as I say was some kind of afterlife and that everything was lying to me and telling me that no this is the real world because it wanted to do you know the spirits or the the, the divine beings that you know that the, the people inhabiting this world that I could see were there to just soothe my soul because I was not ready perhaps to move on to the next, you know, the afterlife, so to speak. Um, I was not ready to move on because obviously I had this, this super desire to protect and watch over my family. I wanted to make sure they were safe and they, they were looked after and that they had happy lives. This is what I wanted and I believe that these divine beings or whatever they were, were were lying to me simply because they wanted me to just experience just peace for at least a little while in this false reality and no matter what was told to me no matter how many times people would say no this is the real world this is the world of the living i obviously learned that you know if i kept going on questioning reality and, and saying it to everyone that you know people would think I was nuts they might even put me in an asylum or whatever anyway you know and you know a clinical ward um for, for losing my mind you know um and so I played the game I said okay yeah, I, I understand you're telling the truth I understand this is the real world but I never believed what I said I always believed that this is the world of the dead and it's only since meeting or conversing, more to the point, because we've never met phys physically, but it's only when I sort of, dis well, he discovered me, Celtic God discovered myself, uh, and explained to me what the waking dream is, and the concept behind the waking dream, that I fully understood what I, I, don't, what I had gone through, and what I am continuing to go through, and will continue to go through for the rest of my life. And that is at the point of the accident where, you know, my heart had stopped or wasn't working. At that point, I was mostly dead. I was partly alive, but mostly dead. As I say, it takes a long time for the body to, in theory, 
die for the life force within it to leave the body. But when I chose to return, I went from mostly dead to partly alive and partly alive to mostly alive and partly dead. And I will remain that for the rest of my life. I will always be partly dead inside. I will never be fully alive as I once was. And the reason for that, as described by Celtic God and the, the Celtic belief system, is that when in that state where you are ready to move on, where you are uh, you know, fated to have died that day and you know, you've escaped fate by returning to life. You know, you've 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 not accepted your death, you've fought it off and through sheer willpower or divine intervention, whichever you've returned to, to to live your spirit through its contact with the ancestors and the afterlife, which is something I experienced during my my death. I remember the afterlife quite vividly and it's not something I'm going to talk about here because it is personal and I have mentioned it before and it's not relevant necessarily to this video as to what I, what I saw because of course it may be different for everyone but all I'll say is I felt incredible peace where, where I was and to go from that back into the mortal realm, back into your body your soul, your spirit that had travelled, the part of the spirit of, of you that had escaped your body and travelled to these outer realms, so to speak, and come in contact with your ancestors, maybe with the gods themselves, it's swollen, it's, it's, it swells the spirit, it makes it bigger than it, it was before, and it becomes too big to re-enter the body completely. Um, or at least in the same way that it, it once did. Um, and it's that, you know, kind of almost not leakage, but that almost expanse of spirit within that, that, that can't be trapped within your physical body. The fact that your spirit exists outside your body as well as inside of your body, it's partly part of that, that makes you feel that you are dead, that you're in the world of the dead. And it's only, as I say, once I had the guide of Celtic God that I suddenly understood what I was going through. No medical doctor wanted to touch me. They couldn't understand why I thought I was dead to the point where, you know, I wouldn't eat because I didn't think I needed food. Dead don't need to eat, do they? You know, and things like this. There were there were many things going on. I was convinced I was dead, and it's one of those things. I mean, the only way that I tolerated it for as long as I did without losing my mind is simply because I came to the conclusion that is if this is the afterlife, is this if this is the spirit realm, I'm quite happy actually. I'm surrounded by my family or imitations of my family in that in this case. Um, I have love. I have. Um, a future that feels semi-real it's you know the future that i was striving for in my life and as a result i can tolerate it you know i can tolerate the the fact that it is at this point in time as i thought a an illusion but it's a pretty good illusion and i should be happy because there are far worse um afterlifes that you could essentially be within i could have been in hell for god damn it so you know i'm pretty happy with continuing essentially a life that i would have lived anyway and it's only through meeting celtic god that i understood that what happened was as i say is that i went from mostly dead and partly alive to mostly alive to partly dead i understood that you know this is the mortal realm. It's not an illusion anymore. I understand. I am living. This is the living world. I didn't die the day of the accident. Well, I did. But I didn't stay dead. 
and that experience after having the guidance and the teaching and the mentoring of Celtic God and, and hearing the teaching of the elders of the old people of the Celtic tribes hearing their understanding of such a concept something as I say the medical career of, of modern day didn't want to even consider after hearing that I had complete clarity it went from chaos chaos and confusion to complete and absolute clarity to wisdom beyond any wisdom that I could have ever have hoped to have attained before you know my my death like experience um and I want to thank Celtic God personally here I've not thanked him really um for really saving me because the problem with being in a waking dream is if you continue to question your existence to question the reality of your existence ultimately there are one or two ends suicide because you can't cope with it anymore or there is of course um, madness and I feel that I was losing my mind and eventually I would have gone down the route of madness perhaps and having obviously <sighs> seen the truth As I say, I've gained clarity in thought. All that chaos has been dispersed. And now I can see far more than I could have ever seen without that death experience. I would never wish it upon anyone. But now that I've gone through it, I understand things I could not even put into words. I understand things that I could never have understood before. And... I just really wanted to really let Celtic God know that my, you know, pursuance of knowledge and understanding of the waking dream, as his clan called it, has not stopped. I want to understand it as much as possible. I want to progress um, my knowledge and understanding of it and the wisdom that comes with it um, and share that knowledge and wisdom with him. Um, by researching as much as possible what the old texts and what the old um peop uh, civilizations thought and i through my research i actually discovered that the nordic people you they understand that obviously these are a similar people to the celts they come from the same stock they're brothers and they're cousins essentially in in bloodlines as far as you know one can, can, could consider but the the nordic people who had a very similar religious belief system to the Celts, actually did themselves have an understanding of what the waking dream is. And it comes from the concepts of... And these two con concepts are very important. And I'll do a second video on it, um, where I explain how these concepts had an impact on not just the religious and belief systems of the Nords, but also their, how it had an impact on their society as a whole, their society, and their, the structure of their society, their geography, how they you know, saw the physical world um, and how they could split the world between the ordered and the disordered, the chaos and the, and, and, and the law, so to speak. Um, and how it affected their cosmology and their beliefs in the cosmology and also the, the, their gods because of course men are really just a reflection of the gods um, in many respects but they also as I said through their understanding of these concepts of Inangard and Utangard the concepts that I'm about to discuss briefly as I said I will do a video in detail on these concepts they also come to the understanding that Utengard, people who had been ex exposed to Utengard through, again, death-like experiences or similar experiences, could be used positively. If, with the right teaching, with the right guidance, when sent to the right people, people who had themselves experienced it and had come to understood what they had gone through, in this case, majority of which were the berserkers but they were not the only warband 
out there that that understood um and had gone through such experiences there were other war bands that had you know experiences and, and teachings to give but the berserkers were a very prominent um war band especially amongst the nords when people had suffered a waking dream they would often join the berserkers if certainly if they had fighting skills or the propensity to fighting skills they would be sent to the berserkers and they would learn more about what they had gone through now the two terms inangard and utangard simply means inangard within the enclosure and utangard beyond the enclosure where those things that are inside the enclosure are orderly, civilised, law-abiding. And those without the enclosure, outside of the enclosure, beyond the enclosure, are chaotic, wild. There's an anarchy as an element to it. Okay, There's a complete wild nature to the Utengard. And even though as I say, that the people of the Nordic, the, the ancient Nordic people strived to be of the Inangard because, of course, they were built, well, Midgard itself, guard, that's where the term guard comes from in Midgard. Guard just means civilized or organized or of the, or within the enclosure, you know. Um, Midgard was built in the image of Asgard. Again, you see the word guard in there. And so you see in their cosmology, you see the realms that were seen as being orderly. Um, just simply through the suffix of the guard word within their within the names of the worlds that existed. Okay? Um, and even though, as I say, because Midgard was built in the image of Asgard, which was a very ordered, very civilized, law abiding place a realm to really look up to in that sense, a heaven, if you wish, um, they still, the Nordic people, despite striving to uh, be a reflection of Asgard as best as possible, recognised that Utengard had its place as well. But only, and only if it could be kept in check. And that's where the war bands, such as the Berserkers, were created, because... People could undergo what's called outlawry, which was a punishment for heinous crimes, where they were, it was seen as the worst crime possible beyond the punishment of death. Because what happened is that people would be, for heinous crimes, would be outlawed and under the process of outlawry. And they would be cast out of society, they would lose the protection of society, and they could be killed um, without any repercussion at all by anyone who themselves were still of the of the the inner guard and so these people these outlaws as they they became um obviously <laughs> tried to keep as far away from human enclosures as as possible they they did not want to be near human society or human habitations at all because they may of course be killed in vengeance strikes or be simply because they were shunned by society they were seen as being um very uh, bad individuals indeed and the the term outlaw means man of the forest and outlawry the punishment means going into the forest so it's just a nice little sort of thing to discuss there but those who had undergone death-like experiences, those who, like myself, and who, like um, Celtic God, who had a death-like experience himself, just like us, where you have been exposed to the Utengard, the chaos, just because you've experienced a death-like experience, because your mind is now in chaos, because it can't comprehend that it is in the living world and it needs guidance it needs focus so to speak these people should not be punished in the same way that outlaws should because of course the people the lords understood that eventually people of this nature would either kill themselves or lose their mind and that when they lose their mind they would become a threat to society and thus the only punishment at that point would be 
that they would have to be outlawed. And so they 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 decided to send these people to pe to people or individuals who had undergone experiences, these death like experiences themselves, who themselves had experienced the waking dream and experienced it but learnt to control it, as they say. The Nordic people believed that the Utengard had a purpose, had a place, as long as it was kept in check. And the war bands that existed outside of society, such as the Berserkers, were war bands that had learnt to keep the Utengard in check through a variety of different means and practices. Often an initiation to join such a war band was to um, combat <laughs> such uh, the totem animal, uh, the totem animal of their warband, because these warbands that had been, you know, exposed to the Utengard, they almost, almost always within Nordic society. I don't know if it's the same within Celtic society had a totem an animal, and for the berserkers it was a bear, and so to become a full berserker and to be, you know, seen as worthy. To receive all the teachings and all the wisdom that the other berserkers themselves had received and had learned and experienced for themselves, um, you would, as part of the initiation ceremony, would have to single handedly go and fight and kill a bear, sometimes with your bare hands or at least minimal weaponry, such as a small dagger, and very often no armour whatsoever. And this is rare. The berserkers, often described as the bear ones, commonly misconceived as those who would fight naked, i.e. bear skins, you know, like bear skin, naked. Um, no, the Celtic people and the Nordic people, the paganistic people, just often sometimes chose to fight naked. It was just a, a thing that the paganistic society, the pre pre Christian Germanic peoples, sometimes did. They fought naked because they believed that armor was useless. Really, um, that the gods would protect them, or they believed that you know, well, if their day is to die, you know, because they believed in fate and they believed that their day of death was predetermined. What's the point in armor? <laughs> you know, what's the point in armor? It's not going to protect you. Fate. If it's determined that you will die that day, will you will die that day? And if it's not, then all the armor in the world it, it's useless to you. You're gonna either die or you're gonna survive. And that's why the the pre -German, uh, Christian Germanic people and tribes did often fight naked. But in the case of the berserkers, that sort of misconception that you do often hear and through modern scholars that they fought bare skinned, i.e. naked, is completely wrong. They wore the skins of the bears that they killed during their initiation ceremony. They killed bears, often bare handed, you know, with their own, you know, literally with nothing but maybe a small knife or with their fists. And as a result, they wore the skin of the bear that they killed with pride to show, listen, I am a berserker. I am not only a wise man, a holy man, because I've experienced the Ottengard and learnt to control it, but I've also proven myself as a full-fledged member of the Berserker tribe by killing the animal that is essentially the totem animal of my warband. As I say, other warbands did exist. The wolf would have been a totem animal to some of the other groups, for example. They were often ferocious animals, but it's just the berserkers that we know the most about for some reason. Anyway, guys, this was really just a video. I don't care if I only get one view, and that one view is from Celtic God. This video is really for you, Celtic God. As I just want to say, I am really trying to, to fully expand my knowledge and wisdom on such a subject, and perhaps also maybe you know, expand your knowledge also, if perhaps these are things that you haven't heard from, um, give you the Nordic perspective as best I possibly can. And I will do a follow-up video on um, Inengard and Osengard um, and its influence in Nordic culture also, because it will give a further understanding to what I've just described there. But I will do follow-up videos also on the Waking Dream, because at the moment I don't know the Nordic word for it. Osengard is 
what causes the raking dream but I'm not sure what they used to call the raking dream so there will be further videos I hope in time and I hope I show an expansion of wisdom and knowledge thank you for tuning in guys goodbye